Hello everyone! This is Loopy Liss and welcome back to Planet Zoo where we are making another habitat today. This one is going to be all about the pronghorn antelope. Now this is the first video of the new year, the first video of the new decade on my channel. So that is quite exciting. If you enjoy this video, feel free to hit that like button. And if you enjoyed it even more than that and you, you know, you haven't done it yet, feel free to hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss any more content by me. So the pronghorn antelope is a species that occupies western and central North America. They live mainly in the grassland regions, but herds can also be found in the deserts. Pronghorns are herbivores and their diet consists of grass, vegetation, cacti, forbs, and shrubs. One thing to note is that I could have made this habitat a little bit bigger than I did, but I was basing it off what I wanted for my franchise zoo. And they do have enough room. It does say in Planet Zoo that they have more than enough room for the amount of animals I put in there. And I think I put about seven pronghorn in there. So it is a fine enough space. But realistically, I could have gone a little bit bigger with it. But overall, they are satisfied in game, so it's not too bad. Okay, let's talk about the pronghorns a little bit more. They get their name from the prominent pair of horns they display on the top of their head. The horns are branched with two points, made of bone, and covered with a keratinous casing which is shed and regrown annually. These animals measure four to five feet long from nose to tail and are approximately three and a half feet tall. The females weigh around 75 to 110 pounds, while the males weigh 90 to 140 pounds. They are reddish brown in color and have a white stomach, behind, throat, and parts of the facial area are also white. They are actually really beautiful animals and they're quite cute in a way as well. Now let's talk a little bit more about the habitat. Now, as I said, this is an African themed franchise mode zoo. So I am using African pieces for the shelter because it makes sense for the zoo that I'm currently working on. But at the end of it, it does kind of fit well into the habitat. Obviously, they are not uh, an animal that's from the African continent. So it would have been more suitable for me to use other pieces, realistically speaking. But it works and I'm happy with how it comes out. So it's not too bad in that respect. Another thing you may have noticed is that I am actually not using natural rock barriers or anything like that today. I am just using the good old wood log barrier and I think that is fine. If you ever want to just go back to the normal barriers rather than making it look too fancy, then that's fine. And if you followed that through with your zoo currently all the way so far, then it makes sense because that's what I've been doing. Mostly it has been log barrier and I'd like to keep it to that for this zoo. So that is why I haven't used the rock method. So this habitat may appear more simple than my other designs in the past, but sometimes it's nice just to go completely simple with it. Sometimes you just don't really need to go super fancy because if you think of other zoos that exist in the real world, they don't go over the top fancy. I know we like that in Planet Zoo and we like to make things look extraordinary and stuff like that. But sometimes it is nice just to go a little bit more basic with things, which is what I was aiming for with this habitat. It's quite basic, it's not too crazy, and I think the simple look has more extravagance than the, well, the more extravagant look sometimes. Also, if we're being honest here, I was worried about being a little bit rusty coming back into things after two to three weeks off of making videos or playing Planet Zoo all the time. So it was a nice gentle ease in to do something a little bit more simple. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of cheated my way with that a little bit. But again, what I said stands. Simple can sometimes be better. That is, I'm not taking away from that. That is an actual true thing. Okay, while I'm putting down a couple of trees, let's talk about the pronghorns a little bit more. Pronghorns can run up to 65 miles per hour, though they are not very good jumpers. If there is a fence, they will climb under instead of jumping over. Of course, I've always known that antelope can be quite fast, but with these pronghorns, I didn't expect them to not be able to jump so well. From this kind of animal, you kind of automatically assume that they are capable of, you know, high speeds, but 
you're, you also assume that they are really good jumpers because of how powerful they are in their speeds. So it is surprising to hear that they are actually not that good at jumping. When it comes to mating and reproduction, pronghorns mate each fall in the dry, open lands of Western North America. Bucks gather harems of females and protect them jealously, sometimes battling rivals in spectacular and dangerous fights. In the spring, females give birth to one or two young, which can outrun a human after just a few days. Now that is impressive for any kind of baby. Can you imagine if when a human baby is born, we were able to literally just run within like a couple of days. That is, <laughs> that is a funny image in my head, but not realistic at all for humans. <laughs> now with the habitat, I have gone a little bit too heavy with the foliage, I think. Though they are happy to have as much foliage as you can put down, so I just kind of took that as putting as much down as I possibly could with leaving them enough room to run around. I, and with the rock work, I could have left that a little bit more spacious as well. But ultimately, they do have enough room. They are small animals and they do run around quite easily in this habitat. So I think ultimately the space is fine for the amount of um, antelope that I ended up putting in. Which was probably, I think I mentioned previously, it had to be around five to eight of them. Five to eight pronghorns in this habitat. And for the space, you wouldn't think that that would be enough room, but it actually is. They have plenty of space. The reason why I have so much rock work on that one side is because I intended to make it a little mini waterfall. I thought it'd be a nice centerpiece for the habitat, for them to run around in and go through or run all the way around in a circle. I kind of had that in mind. And in the end, I think it looks quite nice in the middle there. Because they do, they either walk, they'll walk sometimes through the water, but they also do just run around it. So I think that is quite nice. Let's talk about the last couple of things that I have about pronghorns. A pronghorn is both diurnal and nocturnal, meaning that it may be active in the day and at night. It may move up to 10 kilometers or 6 miles a day, and the male marks territory with scent glands along the way. A pronghorn is very curious and has excellent eyesight and depth perception. It can spot slight movements up to 5 kilometers or 3 miles away. They have the largest eyes of any North American ungulate in relation to body size. Each eyeball is about 3.6 centimeters or 1.4 inches in diameter. Those large protruding eyes provide pronghorn with a 320 degree field of vision and long black eyelashes act as sun visors. And they do, they have very pretty eyes, which really helps with their very pretty faces. One more thing to just note about this habitat is that I haven't put any enrichment items on for this blueprint. I think people were having a slight issue when it came to downloading some of my habitats because they didn't have the enrichment items unlocked. So I'm very, very sorry if that might have been you and you might have been having that issue. The only thing I'm pretty sure you'll need to have for this one is the African theme. So as long as you have that unlocked, this habitat should be able to be placed into your zoos. On that note, and as per usual, the workshop link for this habitat will be in the description below. So if you did want this into your Planet Zoo zoos, Planet Zoo zoos, <laughs> then you will be able to click that link and have access to this habitat. Now I'm just finishing up on this waterfall and then that's it. The habitat is finished. Let's see the pronghorns in their new home. And here they are, the beautiful pronghorns are now enjoying this brand new habitat made for them. A big thanks to Andres Vega who suggested that I did a pronghorn habitat and I'm really hoping that I said your name right, I'm sorry if I didn't. But thank you for the recommendation and I will still be taking recommendations so if you want to leave one down in the comments below for an animal that you'd like to see me make a habitat for that I haven't already then feel free to do so because I do keep a note of what animals again recommended and you might see it pop up as the next video or the video after that, you never know. And if you think I could have done something differently to make this habitat better, feel free to let me know in the comments as well because feedback is always appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you could like, comment, subscribe, share this video, I'd really appreciate that too. And I will see you in the next video. Take care now.
Bye-bye.